Hello, thank you for joining me. Today I'm on the Metropolitan Line, on the Uxbridge branch of the Metropolitan Line, and we're doing another episode of Miniature Railway Britain. Now, as you probably gathered, the fact that we're on the Uxbridge branch, we're going to a Miniature Railway in Greater London. It's the second Miniature Railway of the series in Greater London, and it's also the second one we've travelled to on the Tube. Although the first one we travelled to on the Tube, Watford, what the gap between the train pre gathered where we're going. The first one we went to, which was Watford, was actually in Hertfordshire, but we still travelled there on the Tube. And then the last one we went to, that was in London at Harlington, we didn't travel to on the Tube, but it was in Great London. So it's the first metro in Great London we've travelled to on the Tube, and we're just arriving now at Ricelip Station. So as soon as the doors open, I'll show you a bit about the station. We've arrived at Ricelip. Now, when the train pulls away, it's going to reveal something I want to show you. So the interesting thing about Ricelip is it's the only original intermediate station on the branch. When the Uxbridge branch opened in 1904, this was the only station they provided. All the other stations have been added later, so this one's completely different to all the others, and it has more of a traditional railway station feel rather than, you know, your typical tube station. There's some very nice tube stations on this branch, which will feature in later videos. Now, what's the train disappear? There we have the lovely old signal box. It's been beautifully restored. A few years ago, about three or four years ago, they restored this one and they restored the signal box at Chorleywood and also at Chesham. So I think that's really nice, they've restored them and um, it preserves the atmosphere of the station. And if you look down towards the station building, you can see it's got quite a big ticket office. It's got a nice lattice footbridge. So it's, it's really a quite an attractive station and I have seen steam trains come through here because a few years ago, one Christmas, they did steam on the Met, but they ran it to Uxbridge. So I've seen, it was supposed to be Met number one. I think Met number one came through here on tests, but didn't actually um, pull any public trains. And then the Prairie Tank engine ended up working through here. So that was really quite a sight seeing a steam train. They have also come through here, because when they've done other steam on the Met events, the steam trains come through here to get to the Metropolitan Mainline, because they're based in the depot at Ricelip. So just up there beyond the bridge, is the Chilton Mainline. So under the other side of Chilton Mainline, then there's a spur that goes up to Ricelip Depot on the central line. Now, we have arrived here now. One thing that's slightly difficult is I'm filming and I've got to get my contactless payment out, so I'm just gonna stop filming for a second while I sort that out, and in a minute we'll be outside the ticket barrier. And here I am, I'm now on the other side of the ticket barrier. So um, I just wanna show you the See how tall the ceiling is, it's pretty hard to convey on film, but it's a Why really high ceiling. I just did. Um, so, the other thing I wanted to show you is they have these little heritage information things. I'll take a picture and I'll post it on the Facebook page, but I've just discovered it's a building of national significance, so it's a listed building. I knew it opened in 1904, so this station is completely unique out of all the stations on this branch of the Metropolitan Line. We now leave the station. I've got a bit of a long walk now to Rice at Lido. It probably, if you're visiting as a family, you probably would rather drive, but it's a nice day. Well, it's not the nicest of days, but it's not raining, so I fancy a walk. So here we are outside the station. You can see a lot of buses come in and out. Oh, Piccadilly Line train. Because um, also it's served by the Piccadilly Line. I'm going to head in this direction. The reason I'm going to go this way, even though Rice at Lido is kind of that way, is because there's one of my favourite shops around the corner and a fancier coffee. Also, if we get up here quick enough, we might be able to watch the Piccadilly Line train depart. There's the Lattice Footbridge. Just have a look through there. You can see Piccadilly Line train through the Palisade fence. I appreciate it's not the best view, but at least you can see it's a train. Let's go up these steps now, up to the main road. There goes the Piccadilly Line train. So we're now gonna, now I've seen the Piccadilly Line train depart, continue up to the top of these steps, up to the road. If we just go along here, whether it's gonna work or not, I think it will, yeah. The bridge isn't too high. Let's let you have a view of the station before we go any further. There you go. Nice station. 
with its lattice footbridge. Now, while there's a gap in the traffic, I'm going to run across the road. And as I said, I'm going to my favourite shop in Waitrose to get a coffee. This one of those Waitrose that's by a railway line. I've always liked those ones. It's a bit like Sunningdale. So when you get your coffee, you can sit and watch the trains. In fact, I remember when they did do the steam on the Met, as I've already mentioned, sitting in here having a coffee and watching the steam train go past. So I'm just gonna find my way. It's a funny one. It's easy around the back. And that lady's going in there, I think I'm gonna follow her. It's all right, don't worry. Thank you. Didn't realize there was an entrance here anyway. Seems to have come in the back entrance to Waitrose. Never actually ended up filming right the way into the supermarket before. Right, I'd better get my coffee and then we'll carry on walking up towards Rice at Blood. So, got my coffee from Waitrose. I'm now going to walk up through Rysip Town Centre, through the suburbs, and up to Rysip Lido. And we're going to go and have a trip on the Rysip Lido Railway, which I'm really quite excited about. So here we are, we're about three quarters of a mile up from Waitrose now and Rysip Town Centre. I'm just walking through this rather pleasant housing estate in Rysip. I think um, if I was ever to live in London again, I used to live in Wembley before moving up to Staffordshire. If I was ever to live in London again, I wouldn't mind living here in Rysip, it's nice. You've kind of got the best of suburban London, and as I'm about to show you, London's countryside just behind you. We're now going to go into the woods. The woodland we're going to go into now is Parkwood. I'll just show you where we are. We're in a housing set here. We've got to go up here and you might just be able to see the little railway line on the map. And then we're going to go for a trip round the lake on the Rysip Lider Railway. So this is Parkwood which we are just coming into now. Oh, a boardwalk ahead. I always enjoy a boardwalk. Um, it just makes the path that much more exciting. So we're going into Parkwood. It's the remains of what would have been this huge broadleaf forest which covers all of what would have been Middlesex before the um, formation of Greater London in 1965 but we're talking going back to you know a very 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 long time ago really before even humans kind of you know built up and London grew so as you can see we're going to follow this boardwalk down through Parkwood and we're going to head down the hill to Rysip Lider. Now the lake at Rysip Lider was created in 1811 as a reservoir to feed the Grand Union Canal. So kind of um, you know brings memories back of Rudyard Lake and Rudyard Lake Railway because that is a railway, smaller gauge, running beside a lake that was built to feed a canal. Although this railway is completely different to Rudyard Lake Railway but it happens to go around a lake that feeds a canal. So this is this is kind of like the last remnants of rural Middlesex. I mean, Middlesex, as I said, doesn't exist anymore, but um, it was a very urbanized county when it did, but it did have areas like this. So when well, I say it was rural Middlesex, this is now rural Greater London. There is such a thing as rural Greater London. If you ever do the London Loop, which we have done in the past, I haven't done it for a long time, you can find some really very attractive countryside that's in Greater London, you know, you just wouldn't know existed. The boardwalks ended there, but I can just see up there, it starts again. So, I'm gonna carry on walking down through the woods. Love the sound of the birds singing. Um, it's very pleasant, very peaceful. And I do love these big old oak trees. Quercus robur is a Latin name for an English oak like that. It's about 100 different types of oak, but I won't go into that today. We'll do another video on that one day. 
back onto the boardwalk. I'm going to carry on walking through the woods. Next time you see me, we should be at the railway station. So I've nearly finished walking down through the woodlands. It's been quite a pleasant walk. A little bit muddy, but then what do you expect? In the winter, it would be muddy. Um, we're almost here. I can actually see the station just there. The Rice Up Lider's Woody Bay Station. It's got three stations. Now, one thing I just want to show you, which I think is quite interesting. Once upon a time, you used to have to pay to go into the Lido itself. And that's why here, there's the remains of a turnstile. Now, I don't know if I can go can't go through it it's it's um, seized up but you'd have paid to actually enter the Lido itself and in the summer you'd go swimming in the lake and I remember going swimming in the lake as a child so that's the old turnstile and right here is a very nice looking railway station there we go so um, let's go and find a train and go for a ride Before we have our train ride though, I thought let's go to the beach. Here I am, I'm on the beach, I'm in Greater London and I'm on a beach. And this is of course, no mistaking it, the Lido itself. But it's quite funny how they've actually created a beach. And I do actually remember as a child making a sandcastle here in Greater London on the beach. So the railway runs off up there, right around the lake. And see over there, that green roof building, that's a pub, it, the other terminus is near there. So it doesn't no railway along this bit which is quite nice so it kind of it is an end to end railway but with a balloon loop at this end at woody bay the station at that end is called woodlawn so i'm going to go and find the trains so here we are at woody bay this is their station it's on a, a balloon loop so the train comes in here and it departs this way now before we have our train ride i've been given permission to show you around the carriage sheds so it's not every day you get to do this, so I'm going to walk off the platform and we're going to go through the carriage sheds and we can go and, go and have a look at the locos. So the railway's very kindly given me permission. So we're going to here. This is their carriage shed. Now, um, obviously it has just been Christmas, so they've recently been having Santa specials. So that's why there's these rather large Christmas decorations. So this track here, this is where the coaching stock that's currently out on the service train is. And here is their spare set of coaching stops. So on a busy day, they can run two trains. So um, it's today they've just got the one train out, but the way the, the line is, as you'll see when we go for a ride, I think Father Christmas keeps a sleigh here, doesn't it? Um, there's more Christmas decorations. There's even a big snowman. So they run two trains and two trains can pass each other because as we get to here, as I said, it's a balloon loop. There's effectively double track up there. So when the train leaves the station, the train will come along this track here. And then it returns to the station up that track there. Oh, there's a convoy of horses walking through the woods. See that? I don't know if you can see that through the woods, but there is a convoy of horses. So, crossing the track now. I'm just going to walk up here. I want to show you there set of P-Way wagons. So again, I have been given permission to do this. So if you ever come to Rice at Lido, um, you know, don't just walk off up the track like I am. You see the horses? There you go. Convoy of horses walking through the woods. Quite nice, really. And here is their set of tippers, P-Way wagons. So you can see full of ba this one's full of ballast. So when they go to re-ballast the line, this the diesel loco will take the train round and they can dump their ballast onto the track. There's another wagon there. So as the convoy of horses walks off into the woods, you head back towards the station. So the train is round the other side of the track. So they said to me, you can go and do this while the train's out. So there's no um, risk of me coming into contact with a train at the moment, because much like trains I don't want to come along now. So. Um, it's, it's very uniform railway, everything's very efficient looking, so you can see the point levers are always yellow, you know, it's, um, I think it's very pleasant and, you know, really nicely done railway. So, let's have a look, this is their main workshop, and again, they have said I can have a look. So we go in here, we can see some of their locals. 
So here we have one of their seven lamb locos, Bayhurst. Her sister, I think it's John Rennie, is currently out on the passenger train. So, um, so they've got quite a few diesels and they've also got a steam loco. Mad Bess, she's called, and she's based on Blanche on the Fastiniog Railway. So she's about half the size. Yes, so all the diesels here are pretty much freelance, except for one which we'll get to in a minute. But Mad Bess is pretty much um, a scaled down version of Blanche on the Fastiniog Railway. She was actually built here by the members of the Rice at Lido. Well, you can see there's her works plate Woody Bay Works, number one, 1998. So that's how old she is, 21 years old. And here is their inspection pit, and they've even got an overhead crane, which I think is quite cool. So, and they've also got some very good facilities. One of their smaller lathes, drills, and they've got a big lathe. They've even got a wheel press. So, yeah, this is their workshop. I think it's um, a very nice building, very nice for, for working on logos. I'm now going to go out here. And we're going to go and see the last of their locos. So as we now go out here, we're going to go and um, see the... So that's the workshop. We're now going to go and see the engine shed. What lovely view of the lake, Rysip Lido Lake. And I said on a few beaches in London. I don't think it's the only beach in London. Because I think there might be some down by the River Thames. So that's their beach. Here's their pit for when they want to wash out the steam loco. Now this is the main line, trains will come in that direction but I will check, no sign of a train. We're going to go here to their engine shed, we're going to go and see their other locos. So when the Rice at Lido railway first started they had a steam loco called Prince Edward which is now in a private collection and so I don't think we're going to get to see that one anytime soon. So their oldest loco they now have on site is in here. Now we're going to here, more P-Way wagons. They've got a rail mounted generator. They've got another one of their diesel locos. This one's called Lady of the Lakes. So again, freelance. And here's another train from their Santa Special. Quite nice, perhaps should have come here before. Christmas and seen this has looked interesting this in action. Here's another one of their locos. Which one is this? I've slipped my mind and memory. Graham Alexander. So this is another one of the freelance locos. Now when I said they're not quite all freelance, there's one that's slightly um a bit based on a real one. Here we are. It's this loco here. It's called Robert and it's based on a Western. I think it's a really cool loco. I really like it. She does sometimes go out when they have got on, I have to come on for my garments one day. So yeah, here we are. I've now shown you all of the locos except for one, and that is the one that's out on the passenger train. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take you back to Woody Bay Station, and um, we're gonna wait for the train to arrive, and we're gonna go for a ride, and I'm gonna show you some of the other stations on the Rice Up Lider Railway, because there's three. This is Woody Bay. There's Haste Hill at the end of the lake, and somewhere over there, there's a station called Woodlawn. So I'm just going to go back to the station, Woody Bay Station, and I'm um, going to wait for the train. Originally, when the railway first opened, there was only one station here, I believe, and it was like a dog bone shape, so it did a, a loop at the other end, which I will show you when we go for our ride. And so it's just like the train went round and round. So there's a disused section of track. And then they extended it to Haste Hill, which again, I'll show you Haste Hill. That used to be the terminus. That's now the intermediate station. And then eventually it was, the line was extended round to Woodlawn. So I think it's time for me to wait for the train to arrive. They've let me have a look in their control office here. They have their radio control system. You can see the um, radios which the drivers and the guards carry so they can communicate with the drivers and guards when they're out on the trains and then that way they can control the railway. So say if a train's approaching a single line section, they can say to the driver, you need to wait here 
there's a train coming in the opposite direction and then they can let the driver of the opposing train know that the train is safely waiting and they can pass. So this is their control office. Now if we go through here, we come into their ticket office. Now here we have somebody selling tickets. So what happens is people come to the ticket office and they'll buy a ticket to have their train ride. Can I have a single right. to Hayes Hill, please? One single to Hayes Hill. There you go. That's great, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. So, I've bought my ticket to Hayes Hill. I'm on the train. The guard's blowing his whistle. It's quite a long train. See how it really curves around there? And if you look that way, you can see our loco. So, we're, we're going to go for a ride. What I'm going to do on the way, I'm going to show you some of how the railways developed because as I've already mentioned this railway has been extended over the years and it's got longer and longer to the point where it's now about one and a half miles so as soon as we're on the move I should be able to show you some things here we go we're departing Woody Bay which is for the beach so that's their carriage shed which I took you for a little walk around and we're going to get some really nice views of Rice at Lido in a minute, or well, literally right now. There are not many railways in London give you a view of a beach. So we now pass through the workshops. So, like I said, they've got workshops there, carriage sheds there. And the railway gets quite interesting up here because we're, we're kind of going onto their double tracks. So when the train returns to Woody Bay, it takes that and you can just about see the end of the platform at Woody Bay. And here are those P-Way wagons you're about to see, which I mentioned. So this is like the railway's P-Way yard. We're going to ride up now the double track section. There's the P-Way wagons. So having a look out here, you can see it's a double track section now. Um, you may have noticed, I've only bought a ticket to Haste Hill. And don't worry, we are going to do the full line, but I wanted to get off at the intermediate station in Haste Hill. So there will be, you will get to see the full line, but I'm going to put that on a separate video because because this one minute rail is a bit longer than some of the others. It was just easier to do it as two separate videos. Oh, look, we've got some new sleepers there waiting to be installed. I believe um, after they've stopped running for the Christmas period, throughout January, they'll be relaying some of the tracks so you can see the new sleepers. It's a bit like on Network Rail, really. You sometimes see it on Network Rail, waiting to be relayed, and then the railway will reopen again, ready for the summer. It's quite a pleasant wood ride. It feels hard to believe we're actually in Greater London, travelling through this, this woodland, but it's um, yeah, very pleasant. Anyway, here, you can see the, the double track formation splits now. So when the train returns, it comes back along there. So although the track splits, it is just a double track formation, but with a, a bit like, say, between, um, where am I thinking of? Between Princess Rizbra and Saunders and Chilton Mainline, it splits, but it's still double track. We've just got an area of punch right in the middle. But the one thing I want to show you is this here. This is the original railway. When it first opened, you'd go down that section of track there, and it will take you around the corner and rejoin the other line there. So it was that was as far as Rice at Lido Railway went. So it really was quite a short little dog bone of a railway. It was then extended. What I'll do, I'll put up all the dates of when the railway extended on screen afterwards. So the railway was then extended up here to Eleanor's Loop. So you can see now the other track formation. Oh, it's interesting little train here. Didn't know they got that. I like that, that's cool. Here's the other track, the other line. So we're back on what looks more like, you know, traditional double track line. We're going to carry on up here towards Eleanor's Loop, which was the next terminus of the line. And then the line was extended to Hayes Hill. And I remember as a child, when I came here, Hayes Hill being the terminus. I remember getting off the train at Hayes Hill. And now the train goes all the way to Woodlawn, but I'm not going there right now. I'll let you enjoy the, the 
ride for a bit. So here's Eleanor's Loop. This is the Tissue Station we're passing through. This is the old Eleanor's Loop Station. There's a sign. So you can see where you'd have, after the extension opened, it became an end to end line. So you could get off at both ends. It had two stations. And this is where the double track section ends. We go on single track now. I think about now, yeah, you can just see it. We're passing through an old turntable pit here. So when this was the terminus, the trains would have terminated here, the loco would have been turned around, and then have headed back down to Woody Bay. So the line's now, we're now on the the um, next extension of the line, which takes us to Hayes Hill, which is where we're going to get out. The funny thing about Hayes Hill, because we're in Greater London, all the stations on this line are in the TfL journey planner, and Hayes Hill is the least used station on the TfL journey planner. I believe only about 10 people a year around that number used Haste Hill so it must be the quietest railway station in London so you know I, I couldn't resist the idea of getting out of that and adding to their passenger numbers so we're just coming up to Haste Hill now so here we are you can also if you come here you can walk around the place so what I'm going to do I'm going to get off at Haste Hill now Haste Hill is set down only so I'm going to have to walk I'm going to walk back to Woody Bay and then catch a later train to do the full line. And that gives us opportunity to get some nice on shots of the train. So the train will carry on up to Woodlawn and then I, I'll, I'll watch the train somewhere whilst I'm through. So we're just coming into Haste now. So, as Thomas goes off for his little trip around the Rice at Lido's tea room at Woodlawn, um, I've just arrived here on the train. The, the station is just out there. I'll just show you the station and then I think it's time for me to um, head home. So, here's the station. The train's already gone while I went to have a look at Thomas. So, this is Woodlawn Station. That's their other ticket office. I've had a great time. It's been a really enjoyable um, visit to Rice at Lido. Now, the one thing you may have noticed was that um, I didn't film the whole journey like we usually do on the Minutes Railway Britain videos. The reason for that is because this railway is a bit longer but you are going to see the whole, the whole route because what I've done is 
they very kindly gave me a cab ride and I did a driver's eye view. So have a look out for that. There's going to be two more videos, driver's eye views of the Rysik Lider Railway in both directions. So thank you very much for, for watching and um, please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment and tell your friends both about Henry's Adventures and about Rysik Lider. And if you're in this area of West London, do come and visit them. It's a great day out because you've got the railway, you've got the lake, you've got the woods, so you can have a really nice walk and you can have a ride on the train. So from Willow Lawn Station at the Rice Obliger Railway, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.